Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. When you insert columns and rows into a worksheet, there are two rules that you should remember. The first rule is that the number of columns or rows that you initially select will be the number of columns or rows that you insert. The second rule is that new columns will be inserted to the left of your selected columns and new rows will be inserted above your selected rows. Be careful when you insert columns and rows to ensure that the insertion doesn't create problems for the formulas that have already been created, if any exist, within your worksheets. Formulas will most commonly adjust their cell references to accommodate the insertion, but more complex references, such as absolute references, may not necessarily be adjusted. For example, if you had a formula that was the sum of A1 through D1, and you inserted a new column between columns B and C, the formula would adjust to become the sum of A1 through E1. However, it always pays to double-check your worksheets after inserting columns and rows, just to ensure that everything is working properly and still calculating the correct cell ranges. To insert new columns, select the same number of columns as the number of columns that you wish to insert. Remember that the newly inserted columns will appear to the left of your selection. Then click the Insert button that appears within the Cells button group on the Home tab within the ribbon. And from the drop-down menu that appears, select the Insert Sheet Columns command to insert the new columns into the worksheet. To insert new rows, select the same number of rows as the number of rows that you wish to insert. Remember that the newly inserted rows will appear above your selection. Then once again, click the Insert drop-down button within the Cells button group on the Home tab in the ribbon. From the drop-down menu that appears, this time select the Insert Sheet Rows command to insert the new rows into the worksheet. To delete columns or rows from your worksheet, first select the columns or rows that you would like to delete. Next, click the Delete drop-down button that appears within the Cells button group on the Home tab in the ribbon. In the drop-down menu that appears, select either the Delete Sheet Columns or Delete Sheet Rows command as appropriate. Ensure that you don't delete columns or rows that are required for the worksheet to function. Also ensure that you don't delete just a few cells within a column or row, as that is a very easy way to really mess up formula references within a worksheet. As long as you delete entire columns or rows, the formulas should adjust their formula references just as they do when you insert entire columns and rows. Also remember that choosing the delete command is not the same thing as pressing the delete key on your keyboard. Pressing the delete key on your keyboard actually corresponds to clicking the clear button that appears in the editing group on the home tab in the ribbon. So if you chose the clear contents command, that would be like pressing delete on your keyboard. All this does is remove content from the selected cells. It does not actually remove the cells themselves from the worksheet. However, when you choose the delete command on only a few selected cells, Excel must fill in the blanks in the worksheet with information from adjacent cells that are either below or to the right of the cells that you have selected and then deleted. This can easily ruin formula referencing in a worksheet, so be careful and double check your worksheet if you choose to delete only a few cells. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.